This video is sponsored by Clean My Mark X. It's an all-in-one utility that takes care of your Mark's health and speed, and it also has a real-time Mark OS cleaner, performance monitor, malware remover, and so much more. It's available on the Mac App Store, and I'm actually going to be leaving a link in the description of this video where you can always check it out and always try to make sure you have less impact from these updates. Now, let's get into the video. So finally, we have the answer to what most people longed for, and it's Mac OS Pixel 11.2. The update size was actually 2.77 gig, so not too big of an update, but if you're updating from 11.1 or 11, then expect this update size to be somewhere between five to seven gig. And if we go to the storage section, just to see how much space is being taken up by this system storage, you can see that here it's taken up 16.21 gig. Now let's look at the new features and changes that came on this update. The first thing that I have to mention is that well, as after you update, you're going to come up to an analytic screen where you're going to be sharing diagnostic information with Apple and also crash data. Since I do beta testing, I always choose to share my analytics most of the times for with Apple so that they can know what's going on with this update and also you can now fully set up and use custom canal with this update and whether it's Unix Linux you can customize icons you can customize certain tones and you can also customize the startup logo should you wish to now when you go in dark mode and you create a new folder the borderline is actually also in dark mode so that is good attention to detail i think this could have been something that has always been there for mac os pixel but i just saw it now and i think it's a it's a good thing now also with this update it actually patches an issue whereby apple native apps like apps made by apple for example maps iCloud and App Store, just to mention a few, would bypass third-party VPN security tools and firewalls. So you would think, for example, your data that you are using to browse any of these Apple native apps is being tunneled through a VPN or a security firewall and that wasn't actually happening. So this update now removes that functionality. It's something that needed to be patched quickly. I'm surprised with Mark OS Pixel, they actually took 11.2 to be able to nail it down. But now Apple apps should be going through the correct procedure, which leads to like improved security with this update. A lot of people have been facing issues, especially people that are on Apple Silicon M1 Max. They've been facing Bluetooth issues and display issues. And this update is actually more of a bug fix than an update that provides new features and changes. And the first fix, if you have the 2020 M1 Apple Silicon Max and you're experiencing Bluetooth issues, those are now fixed on this update. And also, especially for those that have the Apple M1 Mac Mini, those, I mean, if you have a Mac Mini and your Bluetooth isn't even working, you can't use your external keyboard, you can't use your mouse, what's the purpose of using a Mac Mini if you can't really control or use it, interact with it? So for the Apple Silicon M1 Mac Mini, they fix also the Bluetooth issues and also external display issues when it comes to that version. There were a lot of issues when it comes to this and this update fixes those. Now within the Mac Photos app, if you would update Pro Raw images, sometimes it would not it would not save the changes that you made. And with this update, it fixes that issue. Now also if you have the LG 5K monitor display and you were experiencing like resolution drops and frame drops, this update fixes that issue and it's good to see that they finally managed to nail it down. Also this update fixes an issue whereby iCloud Drive could turn off after disabling the iCloud Drive desktop and documents folder option. So if you didn't want your desktop to be backed up on iCloud and you turn it off, it would also sometimes turn off your iCloud drive, which was a bug. And with this update, it's been fixed. Another fix has to do with system preferences, whereby Mac administrators would try to access the Mac and input their administrative password and it wouldn't actually unlock. So that's an issue. And with this update, 
that has also been fixed. Also, this update fixes an issue whereby the globe key may not display the emoji or symbol pane when pressed. So those are the fixes that are here with this update. And as I mentioned, you can see that it's more of an update that is tailor-made towards bug fixes and issues that most people were facing, especially when it comes to those that are using Apple M1 Max. Now, with regards to security, Apple didn't actually list most of these so they are running in the background it's going to be a bit more secure than the previous version and also a bit of uh, stability improvement in that section with regards to some issues or bugs that we were experiencing on the previous update that haven't yet been directly mentioned by apple or that some users have got to me on my social media handles to let me know of the first one has to do with email signature. So keep an eye on your email signature if you update to this. There are issues and bugs when it comes to the signature whereby sometimes it is not sent and the field might have something, but when you do send an email, the signature goes blank. So keep an eye on that. Also, another user got in touch with me saying that AirPods auto switching until now isn't yet fixed. So I would like to think that since they sort of worked on Bluetooth issues, especially for Apple M1 Max, 2020 Max, I would like to think that, you know, they would have done something towards AirPods auto switching. But with this update, apparently it's not yet there. They haven't yet nailed it down. So it's something that you would want to keep an eye on. And also when it comes to certain calendar invites, you might not get notifications and sometimes reminders aren't being sent as you're supposed to. And by the way, when it comes to Safari, there are two people that got in touch with me mentioning that it still feels a little bit slow. And one of them managed to say that it's been crashing. But for me so far, I've been fortunate enough not to experience this. Other than that, that's about it for me. If you like this video, please leave a like. And if you haven't subscribed, a sub will be great. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next video very soon. Peace.